Yo guys, I've got a spark which I'm going to use to ignite the fire for brand new episode of the Skylar Supercharged series in the channel. In the Supercharged series, whenever a brand new chapter is brought about, whatever Skylar is currently in the portal of power is upgraded to the next version mover in their chain and they work their way through their chain until they reach their supercharged version where they can become supercharged. That's where the series gets its name from. And so in the previous episode, rather than actually supercharging a character, we instead were made as a character who's already been supercharged. So any character who's already been supercharged, whenever a new chapter is ushered in, they instead add to the bank score, which we've already accumulated up to the mighty number three. And that's only going to continue because placing on supporter right now is going to be none other than Double Dare Trick Happy. I think the Golden Hot Trick has had enough time uh, being alone in the portal with no accompaniment. So Double Dare Trick Happy is finally going to come in and we're going to check out the Academy Store because that's the other thing we set up in the previous episode. We set up both the fact that uh, Double Dare Trick Happy is adding more to bank score as well as the fact that this store is now available to us. But say, um, these little... Uh, intermissions between levels yeah, count as their own chapters, so at the end sale? of these intermissions in the Academy, but, uh, this time that intermission is going to be concluded so by Double Dare Trick Happy, which is going to add once again to that bank score. Which, oh yeah, and also when the elements pop up, I'm going to switch out for Sky to correspond to the element. Can I switch out again? The area changes once more. Those do be the rules. I don't make them. I just reinforce them. But then again, I suppose, given that this is a completely original series here on YouTube, I suppose I did make the rules this time around. Kind of a bizarre uh, thing for me to be doing over here, and what's more bizarre is for me to be spending money on legendary treasure I do not need. But you know what? Do what I drink happy here. He has so much disposable income, he has nothing better to do with it than to buy like unnecessary trinkets. I mean, look at this hat right here. It is no comparison to my, my runic headgear. Obviously, we're going to stick with the runes because they look awesome and they remind me of the world of Skylands. Because, first of all, this hat. It's just majestically floating above Trick Happy's head. That is an expensive sky stone. Boy, I knew Trick Happy had a lot of disposable income, but he doesn't quite have that much disposable income, mind you. We can at least afford a wing sapphire, though. That's good and mighty. But say, the hat is literally levitated above him, and it has like these magical symbols on it, so it very much is a great expression of the magic found in Skylands. It's infinite, um like spread of magic you could say but there's a flower fairy hat which we are not going to be wearing because again these hats cannot hold a candle to the might of my runic headband it is glorious to say the least i could say more but it's not which is why the least is being said all the same and we have came across a chaos diary which we're going to skip the dialing that's right i spent uh 490 dollars on that just to skip it that is my dedication to the best the video game to skip it Good if that doesn't there, emphasize Scott my love for that button right now, I don't know what does. Because it is truly the utmost glorious button in gaming history. If this button right here didn't exist in the controller, the triangle button, this game would be so much worse for it. First of all, Skylars wouldn't have tertiary attacks, that would be lame. And then you wouldn't be able to skip no cutscenes, that would be lame. Skipping cutscenes is the best part of the entire game. Skip the uh, skipping stuff, which is uh, also why skipping over the sea and sky sections of the game, which is exactly what we can be doing today. We're going to skip over those sections in their entirety and make the game infinitely better as, uh, uh, as a result. What won't ever become better over the course of time is by Citroen. Citroen is only a natural path of the course. To assist in finding these books. That's great. The biggest cast we've ever had in Skylanders, and this we're going to be using it to their evil. for a library. I'm okay with that. I'm extra okay with that because of what happens in the library. We're about to see what happens when we traverse uh, the books in this library. It is a cursed library, so the books have some interesting properties behind them. Let's go on ahead. Enough of hinting at it. Let's go to the Spell Point Library and find out firsthand what it is I mean. It is very convenient that we went first. We uh, took the... Wow. Front, frontal incredible. position because our vehicle was able to, with the unique power of the Rift engine, open up a rift to literally teleport through Skylands. And what do you know? Spell Pump Library. 
this is just one long expanded level, so unfortunately, at the end of the Spark Up Library, we're only gonna have either upgraded one Scarlet for their branch, or if the Double Dare Trigger Happy finishes the chapter again, we're gonna add once more for Bank Score. But you know what? I'd be okay with that because the higher the Bank Score, the better, since we can use the Bank Score at the very end to upgrade our characters after the inevitable darkness tyranny because darkness is no doubt going to kill off a bunch of our characters and when a scarlet is defeated in combat we revert back to their series one version losing all the points along the way and our ambition for this series is to end the series with as many points as possible light is stronger here so we're going to remain as double dare trick happy because we probably do not have any light or dark representatives so whenever an element pops up that we do not have the Skarner corresponding to it, we shall remain as we scan our hand. But because when Skarners are defeated, they're Series 1 versions, uh, what happens instead is rather than uh, them um, being defeated in combat and never being used again for the rest of the series, instead, uh, every single Skarner for that version is reset. This happened a couple of episodes back where half of our cast, their Series 1 versions, were defeated in battle. So what happened with them is that every single version of Jetpack, every single version of Poplis, every single version of Royal Brawl, and every single version of Terrafin all got reset as a result of series 1 versions of each being uh, defeated in battle. So either way, the um, punishments for losing a Skarner in battle for this series, uh, a Skarner defeat has a far worse punishment attached to it than death. This is way worse than death. And speaking of how, how bad this punishment is, I should really stop taking full damage because that is how I'd wind up being defeated in combat. And given that this is a character who's made it all the way to their supercharged version, the last thing we want to be doing is losing them and reverting all the way back to series 1 to a Well, that is going to give us banana and nullify the damage. And I'm going to completely horribly mistime that jump. That was not my fault. The platform literally moved at the last possible second. So we took uh, a huge degree of full damage right there. Not even banana could heavily nullify that. We have to watch out for his projectiles. Or, you know, alternatively, we could just walk straight into them. I suppose that could also happen. And we are running out of health just like that. That is very inconvenient. Okay, let's take out the life support problems. By taking that out, we're going to get some food, and it's going to be very convenient indeed. Luckily, this uh, version will work just like Super Mario. We can jump on the enemies to defeat them. Unfortunately, that food I was ever so looking forward to, it fell into the abyss. It's gone now. It's gone forever. This is rather tragic. But luckily, the banana came in to save our asses and made up for losing for... Grapes? <laughs> Never mind, we found them! This was not, in fact, um, a bottomless pit. Instead, it would appear as though before was below us the whole time. It's like that one scene from Encanto all over again. But now, the Encanto reference is out of the way, we have Lava Lance Eruptor's Soul Gem, which we're absolutely going to be preview in, because I want a Lava taste Lance of that Eruptor. Lava Lance Eruptor power. When we eventually get Eruptor all the way through his uh, little chamber, all the way through his different versions, this is, what it's going to uh, this is what it's going to look like, even, when he becomes supercharged. Welcome anyway, we're going to collect all of that money, because I desperately need that money, after having spent it all on things that I did not need. I mean, that is true, if uh, Persephone accepted something else for upgrades now, I wouldn't need all of this money for upgrades now, would I? That was painful. That is why I need upgrades, there's lots of pain going around right now. I want the melon, I somehow jumped over the melon. But yes, that is what makes this whole library so epic, the fact that whenever we enter into a book, it changes up the gameplay entirely. We are into a 2D plane where platform is prioritised over combat, and the graphics are absolutely gorgeous. This is the most scenic Skarners level, hands down, because the soul shaded colour palette is so sharp and contrasting. It is so pleasing to the eye and really draws you in to the storytelling. Plus, the voice actor brings so much uh, charisma to his role, including that part right there, you heard it, the voice crack. Some uh, professional voice actor network. Yeah, that's great there, Kali. Uh, there's another book which we're just going to entirely ignore because it's a sky section and I hate sky sections. Yeah, how about no? Maybe I shouldn't. Also, no. No, I will not. Either way, there is Flynn over here who's actually excited about the book for once. So Flynn's excited about the book and the book has to have uh, something awesome to offer. After all, Flynn does not get easily excited by books, we know this by now. We have ourselves yet another hat. Another hat, which to no one's surprise, pales in comparison to the Might of a Runic Helmet. Why did they even make more hats? 
Like seriously, they peaked with the runic helmet. Surely they knew that they weren't going to make anything nearly as awesome as that. Uh, following it up, so there was just no point making new ones, knowing that they could only go downhill from there. There being the runic hat. I've already let's explore this book without further ado. This is for last time in the level where we actually uh, play through one of these sections um, that isn't a vehicle based section because the final section of the level that's mandatory is a vehicle section, unfortunately. But it is one of the better ones uh, the entirety of the game has to offer. That is convenient! The current element of the area is the same as the Scar Number Portal. Uh, Sugar Happy is already cross pointing with the current element of the area, the element of the area being tech. And there's some food here to heal us up from the health we've lost already. That is also convenient. There's much convenience going on right now on screen. You know, it seems like another episode where we're going to be playing as Double Dare Trick Happy, some more Double Dare Trick Happy, and nothing more than simply just Double Dare Trick Happy. The game just seems to love Double Dare Trick Happy. I couldn't blame it, but we know the game loves him so much because of the fact that these um, elemental areas, they're generated by random, it's completely random as to what the element of the area is going to be. So the game has chosen uh, tech at random, but that randomness also comes with a little asterisk to where elements that you use more commonly throughout the game are more likely to pop up. Since I've used Double Dare Trick Happy a lot throughout the playthrough, it means that the game thinks I like tech element a lot, so it means tech element is more likely to pop up. It's weird though, because light and dark seem to keep popping up, even though I haven't placed onto the portal a single light or dark character in this entire playthrough. So yeah, clearly um, that system for the randomly generated element of the areas, clearly that system isn't doing its job correctly. I had one job and it's failing miserably. Though, to be honest, I prefer doing this after job in the first place, rather than picking the elements that are used commonly for the playthrough. I would like random uh, elements to actually be generated random. Yeah, there are other sections in this level that we could access, such as the Supercharger Gate and obviously the Combat Challenge, but those are risky. And the whole idea of this series is to take as few risks as possible. At the end of the day, we want that score to be as high as possible at the end, and that is accomplished by avoiding our caps being defeated and taking uh, minimal risks. Oh, good, he does take full damage. I was wondering if the Swapple was going to die from falling then, and he did, so now I'm happy. My um, enemy deaths, they bring me absolute pure happiness. There is nothing in life that makes me happier than murdering enemies in code blood. Okay, here we go. We have projectiles now and projectiles in a 2D plane. Uh, 2D planes and projectiles, I should, uh, I should say. They do not mix. Okay, give me food. That's not what giving me food looks like. There you go, that's not like it. They gave me food. In fact, I got two banana punches from that. Those were some really delicious bananas right there. Okay, let's take out this fire spell punk before it takes me out, even though it got awful close. Yeah, playing this in other mode is certainly um, an additional layer to the challenge, shall we go as far to say. But, you know, who needs to worry about challenge when we have bananas that just like Waterman chunk from earlier? I'm kind of just going to jump straight over it. Man, Swapbook Library is uh, particularly short when you just go through the mandatory section. This is like uh, about Paul Island all over again. But this series is very fast paced due to how much we're actually removing. Including, like I said earlier, the utilization of the best video game, a first skip button, which we just did right now. I don't know what, how it could possibly be waiting for other players to skip when there are no other players in sight, but here we are. So now let's push this fella out of the way. I need to make some extra time to get some more ads in this video because I'm all about that money. That's the only reason I do YouTube, you get that money. <laughs> Obviously, that is uh, not a very sincere sound of statement because that statement could be further from the truth. I have a full-time job for the sake of the money. YouTube is here for the fact that I love it and nothing more. I love doing it. Here we are. Something I love doing. Including hitting the switches. That's something I love even more than making YouTube videos. And that's saying a lot given how much I love YouTube videos. But specifically making them and watching them. Anything to do with YouTube, really. So let's pop that off and then I want that final spark I don't know why I want it it's completely unnecessary I suppose I am unintentionally pan out runtime of this video at first this just started as you know a means of getting the supercharger um, like chest but none of this is mandatory we're only really bothered in this playthrough going through all of the mandatory stuff so getting all of the sparks all of the supercharger chests all of this is just completely uh, for the sake of 
me having the phone loss doing it. Because at the end of the day, these spark puzzles are the best ones we've had throughout the entirety of the franchise. I like um, the mechanics behind them, I like the floatiness, it's something uh, unique and inspired. And it's for particularly fast paced too. You know, I like the games of Sky Stones here, they're actually uh, quite tough. We're not going to be conducting this game of Sky Stones because we haven't actually done tutorials for Sky Stones yet, and I can't be asked to sit through that. That is just going to take time, it's going to take minutes of my life that I can't get back, so whilst I will go out of my way to collect all of the sparks, I will not go out of my way to do the, uh, conduct the Sky Stones tutorial. But the case in point about Sky Stones uh, for this game around is that they put a lot of hard work and effort into it. The stones themselves are all uh, very unique and have different abilities, which really shake up a battle because there's been no end of times in Skystones Overdrive where I've been losing horribly, but I've brought it back with some uh, well-placed stones, so to say. And the game is quite a marathon, you know, your opponent starts off either with 20 health compared to your 30 on either medium or easy difficulties, on hard it's 30 to 30, and on that mode it's 30 to 40, so to reduce your opponent from 40 health to 0, it takes a long time and it demands actual strategy, you can't just play your stones willy nilly and win with ease like you can in Trap Team. To be fair, this game did a lot to step up from Trap Team. It's a more ambitious game, that's for sure. Uh, the creativity isn't quite as strong as Trap Team's, and the level design certainly isn't as strong neither, but when it comes to just the Porsche this game processes, uh, the graphics are phenomenal, the voice acting is really uh, passionate and charismatic, and now I'm extra happy by the fact that fire has been brought out, so we can switch out and instead to Lava Bath Roster if the fire scander corresponds to the current element of the area. It means that when we finally beat the Spark Up Library and Shrem Dawn of New Chapter, we can upgrade our current version of the Rupter rather than continuing to add to the bank score build their trick happy. I think to be honest, uh, either fate, um, either reward would have been great. But this this was our fate. This was for reward we were fated to receive it seems. I say this game, it's really uh, underrated amongst the Skarners fan base. Those who rank it as the worst Skarners game are just, uh, you know, wrong on every conceivable level because that's how opinions work. I don't make up rules, I just reinforce them. Unless it is the rules of the Supercharged series in of itself. Apparently, I do make up those rules, given that this is an original series. But you know what? We've mentioned that already. And the only reason I would uh, have to say these things over and over again is to create an effect. That effect being emphasis on everything I'm repeating. So now that what I've said has been emphasized, we can move on and we can avoid this laser. I have a laser of my own which I like to hit the opponent with. I don't like it, however, when it happens against me. I'm a bit of a hypocrite that way. You know, I, I enjoy murdering enemies, but when the enemies murder me, you know, that does not put a smile on my face. Shattered Islands? This whole level is like a reference back to Spyro's adventure. First of all, we get the story of how the Core of Light vanquished the darkness from Skylands in the first place. Then we also get the fact that we have a direct reference to the very first level in Skylands, the very first level introducing us to the franchise Shattered Islands. That is, if you started your adventure with Spyro's adventure, like I did over ten years ago. Man, Skylands has been in my life for more than half my life. That is insane. And now that laser is hitting me. So rude, stop it! Let me hit you with my laser and then not take any punishment for it. Sounds fair to me. Yeah, let's get him. Epic. It's so epic in fact that I'm going to mash that skip button as fast as ASAP. We got very little stars right there, very few stars, barely any uh, supercharger chests, and you know what? I do not care. Uh, this right here, ideas. that's the number of fucks I give. It took me 19 Where's minutes to say a swear this episode. What a peculiar situation for an Ignite the Fire video of all things. I'm not stirring like an absolute truck of once. Whoa, that looked like a pretty hard landing. You'd better go check on Tessa. Nah, she's fine. And even if she's not, you know, we're going to save that for the next episode because cliffhangers are great. So if uh, Tessa is dead, you're going to have to wait till the next episode to find out. We'll see you next week. But for now, 
we have an outro to play itself out, and as for Eruptor, we will switch out for the version he's currently been upgraded to, the Elite version. That is the character who shall start the next episode, but we know how these things work by now, so that is why, without further ado, I bring you the outro of the episode. I cannot, in good conscience, end of this video without first thanking all of my incredible channel members whose continued support helped make these videos possible. Without them, these videos would be near impossible to make, so from the bottom of my heart, I truly appreciate every last one of them. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, there are plenty of options on screen now to explore, and please consider subscribing to keep up to date with all my content. On that note, this video is coming to an end, so thank you so much as always for watching. Until the next video arises, Peace.